And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at Skagway, The Last Great Gold Rush by Tom Decker. This is a game from Victory Point Games, which means it is, um, well, it's not the best quality, I guess would be the word for it, but it is better quality than their games used to be. Uh, they have they cut their pieces out of wood and such, but this is a game in which, you know, there's a gold rush in, in the Klondike area and you have some people and you're trying to get the most points. But you're, the, the, the thing about this game is, is there's multiple ways the game can end. Let me show you. Here's the board, which is made up of puzzle pieces. This is how uh, Victory Point Games is making their boards nowadays. There actually is a board in the box that you can fold out, but I have no idea why anyone would ever use such a thing when you can have a wooden board that actually lays flat. What you're doing in this board, uh, a game, is you're building a western town, and, and this is very, it has kind of an interesting ending, and I like to talk about the interesting ending first. As the game progresses, you have a buildings purchase track here, and there are quote unquote bad buildings and good buildings. And as you build the different buildings in the game, you will move your build your your you have a, a slider and you'll move it to the bad or the good. At the end of the game, you'll look at how many of these prestige buildings have been built. Um, some of them are bad, some of them are good, or what have you, and you look at the total on it. Um, bad and good of all the players and bad if bad has won the day and then or good has won the day and then the number of buildings you have six different possibilities if that there's a few buildings and the town is bad it's a ghost town if there's few uh, towns and the buildings and the town is good it's a resort a lot of buildings and the town's good thriving city or tourist trap and if you notice here you get points for owning the railroad and the hotel and the brothel and different things you get points for those depending on what type of town it is. And then each of the prestige buildings gives you points. And you also get some points slash dollars as the game progresses. And so that's the goal of the game. Now each person starts with uh, a couple of people. Here we have Jim and Ted. And then uh, here in the green people, they have Bill and Clarence. Now I would have actually put Bill and Ted together, but each of these uh, players has uh, a number there on them that shows how good they are at gunfighting and it also shows which buildings they prefer to stay in at night. The one on the left is the one they prefer to stay in and then the second one is the one they'll stay in if the first one is not built. Now what you do on your turn is you'll be taking turns in turn order placing these into different areas on the board. If you place them in the mines you're going to be collecting gold tokens which you'll randomly draw and later on you'll be able to sell them for a specific amount of money. If you go to the railroad, you'll take a certain number of railroad tokens. That gives you two dollars for going there. But when all the tokens have been taken, the railroad will be built. And whoever has taken the most of these tokens will control the railroad, which is worth points. Also, once the railroad has been built, you'll just draw these cards and roll a die to see how much money you get, uh, depending on which card you've drawn. If you go to the assay and mercantile, you can take your gold tokens and deposit them in the bank for money, and you can also buy buildings. You can buy these very expensive but great prestige buildings. They cost $9 each, or you can buy one of these buildings up here. There's three town buildings, and interestingly enough, each town building can be built as either the good building or the bad building. Uh, for example, this can be either a church or a gambling hall, your choice. This can be a restaurant or a saloon. This can be a hotel or a brothel. And then you can go to the sheriff. If you send one of your workers there, he becomes a sheriff. Or you can go here to Hired Hands, where you hire a couple random hired hands who will help you next turn. They might be... Uh, uh, a railroad worker, that means they get to go to the railroad before anybody else does, or, or um, a stooge who just can go anywhere you want him to go. And so you have these different things that, that you can go to. Now, once everyone has done, you place all your workers and you resolve the workers and got your money and what have you, then all the workers go to the buildings to sleep that night and whichever building they go to gets money. So controlling those buildings is a good thing. However, 
because of the good slash bad buildings, a lot of workers won't have any buildings to go to. For example, this stooge here wants to go to the hotel, and then if that doesn't work out, he'll go to the brothel. Well, there is no hotel. It's, um, I'm sorry, not a hotel. He wants to go to the restaurant. There is no restaurant. It's a saloon. So then he goes to the brothel, but it's a hotel, so he can't go anywhere, really, so he goes to the street. So there's a lot of people in the street, and the people who are stuck in the street can shoot each other up, in which case they send someone to the cemetery where they, that worker basically loses a turn. I guess their son comes along and works for you later on. Who knows? Or they can uh, um, go to the bank and rob the bank because money's put in the bank. And when they rob money from the bank, that will get them points. It's also a way that money kind of gets regurgitated back over here to the gold mines. And, or they can do nothing. And then you get points and things for depending on how many people you've killed. And every time you kill someone, you go up higher here on the wanted list. And so this keeps going until there's no more money left over here for people to mine. Since money will come back as the game goes by, that won't happen immediately. But there comes a point where the money will not come back. And at that point, the game is over. And whoever has gotten the most money or the most points wins. And remember, there's a lot of scoring done at the end of the game, depending on what type of town it is. And your buildings will score differently. For example, the ranch here is 10 victory points, but it's 18 if there's fewer than 7 prestige buildings in play. This building here, the Fashions of Paris, is worth more points if the town is bad at the end of the game, or but it's only 13 if the town is good. So you have all these different things that you can build. You can just build one for 14 points or try to take a chance on some of the other ones. It's an interesting concept, and that's basically how you play the game. There's a little bit more to it than that, but that's a basic overview. There's a lot of really cool concepts in Skagway. Uh, I, I, I like the aspect of the six different ways that the game can end. I like the fact that buildings can be switched back and forth. I, I didn't mention the, the sheriff. Each turn, whoever controls the sheriff can take one building and change it from bad to good or good to bad. And that's very interesting as to how that works. And there's this, you know, you want to buy those buildings. If a, lot, if a lot of people keep going to the hotel, you might want to buy that hotel so you can get the money that comes in as players go there. Um, the It's a worker placement game and there's, a, you know, a lot of worker placements. But this one, the workers almost felt unique, which is something unusual in a worker placement game. Workers usually all are the same and they're fairly generic as you put them out. The theme, I think, comes through robbing the bank, uh, searching for gold, but two small problems with the game. One is the pieces are too small, really. Um, a little bit bigger uh, pieces might have helped at the game. You're constantly squinting to see what the icons are. That's a minor thing. A, a bigger thing is the game feels a little clunky. It doesn't flow as smoothly as it should. You're saying, okay, I'm going to do this, especially with the movement of the gold. It just, the, the rules were written okay, but it's just a little hard to grok how the gold is coming from the mine to the people who then put it in the bank where it is stolen and or put back in the mine, how exactly that works. Um, as you put out the different workers um, and you send the workers back and then there's fighting, it, 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 it's good. It, there's great ideas and it's very thematic. It just, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's more of a feel than anything else. It just didn't flow smoothly, but it is innovative. It is unique, it is thematic, and it works well. I'm, I'm giving this one a, a good grade. Um, it's a good game. I just think it could have been better with better components and a little bit more streamlined of rules. But hey, it's still a very good effort. Skagway, the last great gold rush. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Ah, shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.